how does routing table work? Let's quickly talk through the decision-making process in the order of operation. So the order of operation that I'm gonna show you here is important. First order of operation is prefix length. The longest prefix match is the best and most specific route and is always preferred in the routing table. This criteria has the highest preference and it trumps all other route attributes. The next thing that the router looks at, if the prefix length is the same for different routes in our routing table, is administrative distance. If there are multiple routes to a destination of the same prefix length, the route learned by the protocol with the lowest administrative distance is preferred. Administrative distance is locally significant and does not get advertised, and lower number is considered better. So lower AD equals high priority. Administrative distance can be manually manipulated as shown below. So for example, here's a sample config, right? So if you're on a router, we can type in router OSPF1, and then under the router OSPF configuration, we can change the distance to 70, for example, and that would change the administrative distance of the OSPF routing protocol on that router. And the final criteria is metric. And if the administrative distance subnet mask and prefix length are all the same for multiple routes, then the lowest metric is used to choose the best route. RIP uses the metric of hop count. OSPF uses the metric of cost. And EIGRP uses what's called a composite metric or K values and the default is bandwidth and delay for EIGRP. If administrative distance, subnet mask, and metric are all the same, then the router starts load sharing on that link. Now let's quickly take a look at the administrative distance table. And here are the default values. Connected interface has an administrative distance of zero. Static route has an AD of one. EBGP has an administrative distance of 90. EIGRP has an AD of 90. OSPF 110, ISIS 115, RIP 120, and unknown is set to 255. Now, administrative distance is the believability. So the connected interface is always the most predictable and the most believable because that is literally connected to the router, right? It's physically there or logically there. Static route is a route that an administrator manually types into the router. That's also pretty believable. But as you can see, with dynamic routing protocol, the believability decreases with different types of routing protocols. So that what that means is if we have static routes configured on our router, most likely our static routes will be considered preferred over the dynamic routing protocols. Now, let's quickly look at IGP comparison chart. So there are six different features that I want you to look at. First of all, these three routing protocols, they're all classless, RIP version two, EIGRP and OSPF. From an algorithm perspective, RIP version two uses distance vector, EIGRP uses advanced distance vector and OSPF uses link state. They all support manual summarization. RIP version 2 is vendor agnostic, meaning it's multi-vendor supported. So is OSPF. EIGRP, on the other hand, used to be Cisco proprietary. The reason I have an asterisk here is because in 2013, EIGRP was made public, meaning other vendors can now also implement EIGRP in their code and in their network operating system and run it. But I think Cisco took so long to actually make that happen that I don't think there is any adoption in the industry. I, like in other words, nobody really cares to implement EIGRP in their routers. Cisco should have done it a long time ago and EIGRP had just come out, but you know, it is what it is. Routing updates are sent to a multicast IP address on all three. And from a convergence perspective, RIP version two is slow. 
EIGRP is very fast because it has a concept of successor and feasible successor, which means it has the primary path and the secondary path in the routing table available all at the same time and it doesn't have to recalculate. It's very, very fast, so switch over. And OSPF is considered fast, show IP route. This is the routing table. And as you can see here, routing table has this codes section. So what we can see right below that is the different networks that are in our routing table. And C corresponds to the flag or the code up here in the table, which stands for connected. So this right here is a connected route and it's on our interface gigabit 000. And this, and this happens to be the slash 30. Our local route, which is the L flag here, is 10.0.0.1 slash 32. Now this is called a host route because it's a very specific route. It's a slash 32. And it's also directly connected over gigabit ethernet 000. So if you guys remember the administrative distance chart we were looking at, this has an administrative distance of zero because it's directly connected. It's considered to be the most believable. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.